Hello everybody and welcome back to RP1. Today we are going to be finishing up the suborbital rocket development program uh, and the ever elusive 5000 kilometer downrange. But we're also going to start off with the two uh, basic biological experiment sounding rockets that we grabbed the contract for in the last episode. So let's go ahead and hop in the VAB real fast and kind of finalize these. Um, we do need to unlock the biological sample capsule as well as the Aerojet uh, SRB, but that Aerojet will be good enough to launch us into the next era of sounding rockets that we need to be in and uh, will be enough to conclude this mission. So we're going to get two of those out on the launch pad because the biological experiment is good science and we're going to want all that we can get. Uh, we are going to hire on some people to work on the uh, the launch complex. We can only have 17, so we're only going to hire 17. Uh, and then later we're going to hire some scientists. It's uh, quite a good time to work for our agency. But we are going to start off with the first of three launches today. Uh, and that is the two sounding rockets that we put on the launch pad, as well as our third capstone project. Uh, a little bit of a short episode today, but I have some big plans for the next one, as well as uh, a tutorial on how to get to orbit. Not entirely sure why the game decided that the most important part of this rocket was this middle SRB here, but nonetheless it was fun to see it on its journey. But as we get back to the main body of the rocket, we're going to push ourselves upwards with the most advanced U-1250 engine we uh, we have that we can afford and uh, the lightest weight material as this is uh, the sounding rocket 2 and whenever I deal with the numbers in uh, RP-1 it's always whenever there's a significant enough change between uh, each generation and the change on this one is a lighter body uh, utilizing the early material science node. So, with all that said and done, we uh, finish up our temperature scans of uh, in space uh, or in high altitude above Earth. Now we're going into space low. Biological sample ran for about 4.3 science and uh, will continue to run in the atmosphere as well. We reached the 100 kilometer requirement for the mission, and now all we gotta do is return home safely. We also had uh, about 35 units of sounding payload on here. That's what that silver tank is uh, beneath the experiment capsule. And uh, I will forget to take that off on the next rocket. You know, as you saw, I just put two identical rockets in. But uh, yeah, we could have saved ourselves some weight, maybe gotten a little bit of extra height from that but nonetheless doesn't make too much of a difference it's not too big of a problem as uh, the science will be pouring in soon enough we're gonna follow the uh, probe core back all the way down because we do have to return home safely after all thankfully we are landing in the water nice soft touchdown relatively close by to the KSC so we won't have to swim far And once it calms down, it reaches, uh, I don't have the speedometer up, but it's a uh, very low speed. Uh, so we know that we are going to be safe to time warp our way down. We are in no danger of destruction. So as we hit the water here, the mission uh, completes in the top right, it's now green, and we can uh, go ahead and recover the vessel. We had to launch those sounding rockets in the time that we did because we were waiting on the early material science for the bumper rocket uh, 1A, that is the one that will take us 5,000 kilometers down range, we needed uh, better quality materials, a lighter weight body for this, uh, for this to work. And so uh, that's why we ended up sending up the sounding rockets is basically to kill some time while that science unlocked. Um, we also are going to be unlocking uh, upgraded avionics. So I'm playing around with the idea of waiting until then to launch the mission to see if the weight loss in the upgrade is significant enough to make a difference. So I was looking at both the total weight of the rocket as well as the delta V change between the two. 
Um, I also am going to be upgrading my engines as well, so I wanted to take a look and see if that could be the deciding factor uh, to make this mission work. Because if you've never done the 5,000 kilometer round range, uh, then I just all I need to say is that sometimes the slightest changes make the biggest difference, and uh, you never really know what what will be the best uh, best method until you try it out. And uh, it's a lot of back and forth and testing and retesting. And so uh, ultimately, you got to find the, the right balance between the parts. And right now, I would like to keep my science low. I don't want to have to have really big, beefy engines. I'd like it to just keep to the early material science up, uh, unlock. And that's what we do. But now, let's go ahead and launch Sounding Rocket 2. Uh, this one is not completing a contract like the first one. Uh, because, you know, the contract has already been completed. This is simply just to gain more science. Uh, not a lot of science will be gained from this, but the rocket is so cheap, takes very little time to build, uh, very little time to roll out. It's essentially just keeping our science going for very little cost. And uh, in this early game, science is really the best way to get ahead, as we saw in our first episode by being able to break uh, the boundary of space and getting all that uh, in space science early on uh, that gave us a significant boost and we were able to do quite a lot within that first few months of our agency starting. But as we see here, we've, uh, we're up to 3.5 uh, points of science on our in-atmosphere biological experiment, so we're going to have to do this launch a couple more times, or at least uh, have this experiment launch in the atmosphere a couple more times before we can fill up that science. But uh, nonetheless, we have a successful deployment of our parachute, and as we're dropping down at 3.4 meters per second, we are safe and we can recover. So with that being said, we have a total of 11.7 science. Yeah, see it only grabbed four there, um, but we have 11.7 science, which is actually pretty significant. So we're going to go ahead and uh, after looking at all my options, I decided to go into basic rocketry for four points. That'll help us with our immediate next downrange contract. However, we have seven points to spend and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it right into 1956, 1957 orbital rocketry engines and uh, just start aggressively pursuing orbit because I think, we, uh, I think we're set up in a way that we can. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get our bumper rocket uh, 1A out and ready. We're going to have to tool it and finalize it, but we now have the early material science to, uh, to make it out of the lighter weight material. So after rigorous testing and different flight patterns, I, uh, I, I've deemed this acceptable, so we are going to go ahead and tool it because we're probably going to end up using this design uh, a couple more times because we do have a few more uh, long distance downrange contracts. Some of them are optional, but in the next program we're going to need it as well. We also designed this um, Bumper Rocket 1A film canister. It doesn't, it's not actually a bumper rocket, but because of the fact that it uses the same lifting base you know I just kept it in the same family but this will satisfy uh, one of the starting contracts for our science program suborbital science uh, research and so uh, we're gonna get that loaded up onto the launch pad but or into the queue to be put onto the launch pad but we are gonna be doing that launch in the next episode today we're just gonna finish up with the 5,000 kilometer downrange launch on the 2nd of July 1954 um, unfortunately I don't know what happened to the game audio of this, so the rocket engines uh, were noticeably absent in this episode, and I apologize for that, but I will try to make sure that doesn't happen again, because I do, I, I enjoy the, the engine sound, so I'm sure some of you do as well. Uh, our flight today is being handled by MechJeb. Uh, as you see here, the ascent guidance is open. We're using the classic ascent profile with an orbit altitude of 2,000 kilometers. This is important because I tried several different variations, uh, um, different modes of uh, MechJeb, and as wobbly and wonky as this one is, this is the one that uh, managed to do it. So we are going to stick with what works and perfect it later 
when it matters a little more. But for now, this was what worked for us, 2,000 kilometer altitude. Once it started to slow down here, I did need to manually pitch it up a little bit to keep it from uh, dropping over too uh, horizontally because we needed the right angle of approach. And once again, focused on the wrong part. But we needed the right angle to uh, achieve the goal. Uh, with, with the downrange milestones, the 3,000 and the 5,000, um, I've, I've found a lot of luck in altitude. Uh, this is not the right mentality for going, you know, orbital because that's, that's ultimately what this, uh, is leading to. It's trying to get you to go downrange f far enough that you <laughs> never land, but, uh, with this contract specifically is, it's notoriously difficult. And I found by achieving an apoapsis of uh, over 1.3 million, um, let's see right now we're at 1.43604, uh, but basically by achieving a high enough altitude, we uh, kind of solve the problem of the distance because it just simply rotates far enough and goes far enough that by the time it explodes, it's already gone way too far. <laughs> so. Uh, 45 degree for that final unguided stage uh, and SRB, which ultimately SRB also provided uh, to be required for this design. Um, it's not the best design, I know. Uh, it's just end up after many times uh, playing this, many attempts, uh, trying to be a little bit more efficient, be a little faster. It just ended up being my default because it just it works so well. Uh, I try to just over-engineer it so it just overshoots. And as we see uh, soon, we are now past the 4,000 kilometer range and we are nowhere near the, uh, the atmosphere. So uh, with only 500 kilometers left to go, 300, 200, I kill my time, time warp to kind of bring myself in a little slower. I wanna watch the numbers cross uh, realistically without just jumping to the end and figuring out that the contract has been completed, but to actually see it complete for myself. There we go. Downrange milestone has been completed. We're still 260 kilometers above the surface and so well into space. So that means that we have completely obliterated the target goal. We're probably somewhere in the tune of 6,000 kilometers downrange, but uh, and that was primarily due to the altitude. I've done this mission before where I try to get myself very horizontal, very um, intentionally trying to mimic an orbit path, but uh, ultimately this just ended up working for me. Yeah, it says 11,000 uh, ground covered, but I'm not sure how accurate that is. But as we see here, we have completed the early rocket development program. Um, we are at the peak of our funding. Uh, we have two more years left and we can still make some more money. If we complete it now, we will get a bonus of 45 uh, reputation for that. And uh, that will be helpful in starting our next program. Uh, however, we are gonna look at that in the next episode. We're gonna complete the program in the next episode and take on something new, look at our leaders and launch that uh, film rocket that I showed you earlier. We're gonna start with that and then figure out where to go from there. But anyways, that is all I have for today's episode. I really like the pacing that we've gotten in this and how quickly we've been able to make some progress a lot faster than I'm used to. And so I'm really excited to see what we can do with such success. But anyways, that's where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more RP1. If you did, think about subscribing. Drop me a like, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.